Hi, my name is Mark Burgess and in this technical presentation today I'll be taking you through the main features relating to the bridge design in InfraWorks 360 workflow. So what I'm going to start off by doing is creating a road and we're going to connect up using a local road from this intersection across this open piece of land and connecting it to the road on the other side. Now, as we zoom in, we go to a side on view, we can see that it's crossed a couple of valleys. So we're probably going to need a bridge to cross this stream. So to create a bridge, I will simply go to the bridge icon and we have the choice of a precast concrete girder bridge or steel plate girder bridge. So I'm going to start off with the concrete girder bridge and I choose the start location and the end location. And an intelligently designed bridge based on standard bridge design principles and heuristic modeling is created with many features. We've got the bridge deck and we can see we've got a road with a handrail, well, with guardrail. We have line girders, we have bearings, we have piers. If we go underground, you can see there's even piles in there. And back over here, we've even got an abutment. So it's a fully detailed model. And as with any road, if we select the top, we can see the road and we can adjust the style. So there are a f number of bridge styles we can choose from here. So if we scroll up in the style palette, we can have a footbridge, for example. So we can see that uh, you've got a footbridge and you can see that the piers have been reduced to single columns because that's all that's required for this particular design. So it's a fully parametric model, whereas any of the design changes, it updates to what is a default values for it. So we can, I'm just going to stick a road with a median and curved rail. So we can see we've got a nice nice bridge here with a good design. Okay, so, so we can see we have um, four piers here. If I just select below the bridge, we can go into the bridge icon and have a look at the asset cards. It's using the Ashto LRFD design standard, but there is also Australian, British and Eurocode standards available. Um, it gives you some basic information about the length and the deck width and here again we can uh, select the road style. Um, so if we have a look at the piers first, it's showing that there's four piers on here. There's one, two, three, four. One of them is slightly tucked away so we probably don't actually need that. Um, so I can easily go on to here and just drop that down to three. Okay, this pier appears to be where the stream is, so we don't really want that there, so I can just use this grip to pick it up and move it. Uh, we also have other things to adjust the angle of them so we can get it to fit the existing terrain. And just as with the pier, it's also possible to adjust the piles and you can see that this line beam here in the middle that the length of that extended based on the position of where my pier is. If for example I wanted to change my bridge from a precast to a steel plate girder bridge then I can click on that and you can see how the parametric model will update the bridge 
and we have much longer girders and we could probably get rid of these piers down to just having two. Or even just one. And you can see here the detail of now we have a haunch on the bridge that uh, the model fully updates to be able to take take the load as assumed by the design. What we can also do, we can check a clearance envelope. So if we needed access underneath, um, this stream isn't quite large enough for boats, but if there was a road, then we we're able to place a clearance envelope. So here we've got a clearance envelope. We can start, choose the start position. So 67, so I can move that back to 65 and change the end offset back to 93. Oh. And we can increase the height up to maybe 12 meters. And we can see here that if that's our requirement and you can just do a quick visual check and see if it impacts. Now we can right click and if there has been an impact on our required clearance then we can just do update vertical profile and the bridge deck will be raised up to accommodate the required clearance. I can select the bridge and right click I can toggle the deck transparency. This will expose the line girders that we actually have on our bridge. So we can select the individual line girders and we can see what is being used at any of the points. So for this section we're using the Ashto standard so therefore it's taking the Ashto line girder types. Obviously we can change all of these values as well. We even have the material strengths down here. And I can simply select an exterior girder and change it to a different type if required. There's an extremely large library of line girders available. You can also select one of the line girders to get information about the values of what's been used to create this particular bridge design. As I mentioned before, we also have abutments. So you might wish to find this easier by going to your visual effects and reducing the surface opacity. So you can actually see, we can see we have, in this case, some wing walled abutments. And just like the other bridge components, these can be fully edited also. So we can have a simple abutment or using wing walls and all of these, all of the values related to them can be adjusted. So we can, for example, adjust the seat depth in the middle. And on the right hand, left hand side. We can even adjust the wing walls itself. So if your design requires it, then all of these bridge components are fully customizable. So you can see here how quick and easy it is to look at many different design alternatives and how quick it is to sit down simply with a client or with external stakeholders and present them the various options and make any modifications directly within the context as required and help answer any questions. So 
Once you feel you've come up with an accurate conceptual design that you wish to use, you might want to take it one step further and carry out some actual structural analysis on the bridge. So we're going to have a look at line girder analysis. So in essence, that would be looking at each of these line girders and looking at the stresses applied to them with standard loads passing over the bridge and seeing if your design is suitable because at the moment you're simply only using standard default values for your line girders. So up here we can go to the perform analysis and first off we can have a look at some quantities. So we can get quantities straight off from your design and we can see how much concrete and steel is being used. So if, for example, if, for example, I change the bridge to a steel plate girder bridge, we can see all of those quantities update. And when you make any changes to the bridge design, the quantities update also but so does the actual structure of the bridge. And any slight changes can cause the bridge to no longer be suitable for your design based on the initial principles. Because after all, a bridge analysis generally needs to be done by a proper structural bridge engineer. What we're able to do is select line girder analysis and we can select the bridge here. So um, you can get a few settings. So um, it's got some more analysis information um, up here which will link to um, a website providing more information about how the analysis is actually carried out. And we can click on project name and you should enter some basic information into the project name um, because all of this will be applied to the final report that's generated at the end. So if we do start analysis then it's a cloud analysis that effectively takes your bridge design off and it sends it to um, the cloud, serve, cloud server computers which use Autodesk Structural Bridge Design as the program to carry out the calculations for your bridge. So rather than having to rely on a structural bridge engineer to tell you if the general concept is correct and going through all that detailed stuff you can get to the answers very quickly here straight in your design. Obviously the full detailed analysis would still have to be done by a structural bridge engineer however at least you're passing a concept that's likely to be accepted. So this is obviously going to take a while and um, we use cloud credits. So once your analysis has been completed then you'll get a notification here in the line girder analysis asset card. So it's saying that 12 girders have been analysed and only 6 have satisfied the design requirements. So if we want to look at it in a bit more detail we can just zoom in and we can hover over the individual beams. And we can see a ratio factor there and these are performance ratios, thinking of them as a percentage. So a value of 1 would be 100% of the load capability for that particular beam. So we can see here that some of these over here are much higher than one so therefore these ones have failed but these ones still up in the 90 percent. 0.94 they seem to have passed. So if I then go and select an individual beam then we can see here the pre-stress pre transfer value the stress on the beams during the erection stage and the construction phase and also the line load bendings. 
and the shear value there at the bottom. And we can select a different beam here. We can see this one is much, much lower values. I'll take one of the ones that has failed. And we can see that uh, it's actually failed quite significantly. And it says unsatisfactory tendon layout, the bottom tension excess stress, 7.28 megapascals. So what the program has done, it's taken um, a standard line girder analysis with um, standard reinforcement, as you'd expect to find in it. Um, so... In this case, you'd either need to look at changing the beam types, redefining the geometry of the bridge itself, or going into um, slightly more detailed analysis in the structural Autodesk structural bridge design itself to have a look at and modify some of those tendons. So we'll have a look at how we might be able to do that. So if we click on the reports now one of these reports is available we can see performance ratio of 2.92 if I were to click over here then you can see that each of these beams has their own report so in this case there would be 12 beams analyzed and therefore there will be 12 reports generated so we can see as we scroll through here it's got all of the values in here all of the detailed calculations that are carried out by Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. And if we go to the end, we can see we've got temperature gradients and all sorts of calculations that's done. Now, this is simply just an initial analysis, and if you wanted to take that from this initial conceptual design and actually hand, hand it over to a bridge engineer to go through it and do some more detailed analysis and actually fix some of these problems and come across with that. What we can do, we can go to my file here. This is just opened in uh, Adobe Acrobat. If I go to the properties, what I can see here, I can see the location as to where this PDF file has been saved. So we can see here all of the different reports that have been generated. This looks like it's just gone into a resource file under my model folder. So that's gone into the bridge report. But if I go up one level, then what I can do, I can go to model. And in here, model, I can see that it's generated some Autodesk Structural Bridge Design files. So you can open up Structural Bridge Design and take the line girders and open them up directly within Structural Bridge Design. So the bridge engineer can start his analysis without having to recreate the bridge beams He's already got those bridge beams available for him simply just to import. Once you've completed your bridge design within InfoWorks, you might wish to export it to Civil 3D for some final detailing and documentation. To do this, you first must exit the model, and then it's probably best for you to exit InfoWorks completely. In Civil 3D, Go to the Insert tab and ins open your InfoWorks 360 model. Navigate to the SQLite file. We're using the Ozark one at the moment. And it will detect the coordinate system. So you need to match the coordinate systems up. I'm going to open the entire model. We'll have to wait a few moments for that to load. So we can see our model has been brought in here with the triangulation surface terrain. I can go straight here 
and select my bridge. I'm just going to isolate the object. And we can see that all the detail of the bridge has been brought into Civil 3D. The line girders, the piers, the abutments, foundations. And it has come in as a 3D solid. So let's review some of the main points covered in this presentation. We've seen that um, bridge design is easy and intuitive in InfraWorks 360. You don't have to be a technical bridge specialist to actually create a conceptual bridge design. Therefore, it's much quicker in this um, conceptual design process to get something that is workable. Um, the bridge designed is very detailed and it's a 3D model there in the design context of the real world that you will be working in. It's very quick and easy to explore multiple bridge designs and evaluate different options. You can extract construction quantity estimates and use that in your evaluation process. You can also carry out detailed structural analysis of the line girders and there is also an integrated workflow between the preliminary and detailed design phases with InfraWorks and Civil 3D. So thank you for listening to this bridge design in InfraWorks 360 presentation. My name is Mark Burgess. Thank you very much.